So today I'm going to be molding the armor's hammer and we're going to be using our go-to standard BJB Enterprises TC5024 as a tin cure silicone. So we have, we're actually going to do a little bit different mold than, than we have been doing in the past. We're going to do a brush on with a rigid shell around it. That way it'll help keep it nice and straight because it's so long and narrow. And it'll use less silicone, so that's cool. And, uh, oh, fun, fun little tip. If you use a scale for anything, if you cover your scale in plastic wrap, then you don't have to worry about getting your scale all gunked up with resin and silicone and everything else that you measure. This is our new scale because our other one got too gunked up and we had to get rid of it. This one's also more accurate, so it's pretty cool. So that's what we're doing today. And then I also have this little, this is just a little piece for something else I'm working on, but I always like to have a extra thing or two ready to mold in case I have a little extra silicone then I can just dump it in there and kill two masters with one pour. So I've already measured out the part A because we have it in a giant drum, which is impossible to pour when it's on the table. And I didn't want to move the scale to the floor and do all that. So here goes the part B. This is a 100 to 10 ratio. I'll tear this. So we need 30 of this. And the only reason I use the funnel is because the pour on these bottles, like almost every resin and silicone. Oh, hey, don't do that. I breathed on it and changed the weight. Uh, it's not great. So I just pour it through a funnel to make sure I don't make a giant mess. I might anyway. So there's paper on the table, right? Now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, black natural gloves, that's like a premium, right? I actually, this is one, I think I have four pairs of these left from pre, pre-pandemic days, BP. And uh, I broke these out just for you guys for the video. Because I've been using really crappy gloves that don't last more than five seconds. I don't want to be changing my gloves every shot. <laughs> I don't have to. Almost there. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, there we go. Good. Not too much of a mess. A couple of drips. That is acceptable. Bam. Now, because we're brushing this on, I'm not going to bother degassing it because that would be a waste of time because we're going to brush it all on and probably make bubbles anyway. Um, so I'm just mixing this. As always, scrape the sides really good. This stuff makes a really nice color. I love the color of this, right? this silicone. Nice bright blue molds without having to color them or anything. Oh no, look at that, I got a drip of the part B in here. Don't want that, that would probably be a fun curing issue later on. So you might be wondering why, if I'm going to do a brush on, I haven't built a box, and that's because it makes it way easier to not make a mess. And then it also will give my shell some nice edges when I get to that step. So what I'm going to do is mix this all up. I'm going to scrape this so I can get all the stuff off of this. By the way, if, like us, you are always looking for ways to reduce waste, I highly recommend, at least for mixing silicone, to get a long metal spatula like this. They're basically for, for like frosting cakes and things, but they're great because you mix your silicone, you let it cure on the thing, whatever, you know, you don't get scraped off, and then it just comes right off. And since it's stainless steel, it's really nice and easy to keep nice and clean and reuse. I've This is the same mixing stick I've used for silicone for 
like three years now. Resin's a different story. I uh, I did an experiment to see if I could use this for resin, and then I had to exacto off all the resin. I what I haven't tried, which would probably work better, is hitting it with some mold release before doing that. But this is dedicated to silicone, and I don't want to mess it up, so I haven't tried that. Now I made a, as you saw, I made about 300 grams, which should be more than enough to coat this whole thing, although it's really long. So we'll see. I'm hoping that this will be plenty to cover it and then also pour some of the other little mold. But if not, whoa, that's fun. Did you enjoy that ride? Cool. Um, hopefully it will be enough to coat this whole mold and fill the other one up. But if not, that's okay, because if not, then I will fill that up later, because it's not a rush. It's a little side personal project. So we have this, and what I'm going to do actually first, before I do any brushing, is I'm just going to quickly pour down the side here. And I did mold release this, by the way. I just did that before I turned on the camera. I'm just going to do a nice little pour all down the whole thing. I don't really care too much about getting it, getting all of the um, clay covered because like I said, this is really to get this all nice and coated um, for the beauty coat. And then we'll do some thickened layers over top of it. 5024 is a Shore 25A hardness, like a lot of silicones you may have seen or used for brush on molds. Um, we like to use it for pretty much everything. Like I said, I don't know that we really use much of anything else because it's really good at this. Um, oh yeah, there's plenty for this. Oh. So I'm gonna stop right there. And I'm actually, because I have more than enough left and this is already coated, I'm gonna go ahead and pour this guy real quick. Bonus points if you can figure out what that's for. I don't think anybody could figure it out, but sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised. It's one little part of something much bigger and it doesn't go pew pew. So that's the only hint I'm gonna give you. And because this is a little small mold, I'm just gonna pour in the corner here real high and not bother degassing this again. This has a 30 minute uh, pot life, which is plenty for what we're doing. Uh, with any brush on mold, what you want to do, um, if you've watched our armor or helmet mold, this is going to be kind of the same thing, videos. Um, you do your first coat, brush it on. Once it's tacky, then you do a thickened layer, which um, I'll show you the thickener in a second here when I'm done with this. Because it's sitting right over there. Uh, but we're going to mix up some more, thicken it once this is tacky, and then brush that on. And I'll give a, a thicker coat on top of the thin brushed on coat. And then after that, we'll mix up uh, some of the shell stuff that you may have seen on our Ahsoka bracers. But I'll show you that in a second here too when I'm done boring this. Do, 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 do. Any second now, it's gonna fall inside. Come on. This, this mold also doesn't need to be perfect for this little piece because this is a piece that actually, once it's made into the thing that it's a part of, is actually more structural than anything else. You won't ever actually see it. You might see a little bit, but not enough that it will really matter too much how it looks. There 
back on the side. I'm gonna have to grab my tool here. Get your mind out of the gutter. And I should go right in the center. Now you can't see it because my arm's in the way. I'm brilliant like that. There we go. This is just a one part mold, by the way, in case you're wondering why the box is so shallow. Well, not that shallow. I mean, I guess I could make a new box and flip it over if I was making a two part mold, but it's a one part mold. So I made it exactly the right size and height that I needed. <clears throat> makes things easy because then I know exactly when to stop pouring when it hits the top of the edge of the wall. There's just a little bit more in here, so I'm just gonna scrape it all out and put it on here. Do -do -do. So obviously, because this is poured on here, most of the silicone has sort of fallen off of the the uh, tong handle and everything and gone over to the clay, which is fine. That's what we're gonna do. I get this all in here. I'm gonna go back and spend a couple of minutes just kind of brushing it up on top. Although everything is coated pretty nicely, so. <clears throat> Just gonna give it one, one, one brush through, just with a chip brush, to kind of just make sure everything is extra nice and coated. Just go all around the sides, very gently, and make sure this all has a nice coat. So what I'll what I'll do when I'm doing this, like I said, it has a 30 minute cure time, so. I'm gonna go and now that it's all poured, I'm trying not to touch the silicone that's actually already on there and just brush the other stuff up on top. But I'm gonna do this. I'll wait about five minutes and then do this one more time and then wait for it to get tacky after that. It's funny using a that one of the tools that I use is a cake for making cakes and I always think of cakes when I'm doing this because it looks like frosting desserts to me. Especially when it's really bright fun colors. I have a feeling the kids would love a cake that was frosted in frosting this color. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna just set that right there. And set a timer for five minutes, and then we'll check it again. All right, it's been five minutes, so we're going to do one more quick little brush up here. You can see it's already getting a little bit thicker, so you're going to be extra careful doing the brush up, because we don't want to, especially, I don't want to touch the actual thing because I don't want to introduce any bubbles to the side of anything, the side of the, where the silicone is touching the master. So be really careful over here. Obviously got to do extra work on the highest points. made this hard on myself by putting this getting that top edge so close to the wall but that's the problem when you have something that's a weird shape like this i guess i could have made a weirder shaped box but that's also more work <laughs> i'm gonna try to 
find that balance between making yourself more work on the front end or the back end or wherever. All right. Do one more little bloop bloop over here. So now here comes the science bit that you weren't expecting. So what you might not know is the one of the major differences between tin cure silicone and platinum cure silicone. Platinum cure silicone cures via heat, like resin. Tin cure silicone, tin cure silicone cures via condensation. So unlike platinum's cure silicone, if you want to speed up the curing process, you can't just heat it with a heat gun or put it near a heater. But what you can do very easily is you can, well, for lack of a better term, you can hot box your mold. So what I do is I take some paper, some of the blue shop towels, squirt bottle. That noise is me spraying the paper towel, getting it really damp, like so. And I'm gonna put these, a few of these around the mold. I know you're thinking, that doesn't really seem like that's going to help any, just putting some paper towels around it. But just wait. The best is yet to come. All right. One more here. And you can be... You can get these really wet if you want. I'm just going to a little bit because I don't want to speed it up. I don't want to make it cure super, super fast since we're going to come in and do the other brush up layer okay so what you can do voila and then take an appropriately sized cardboard box which was kind of hard to find because this is so long and i'm kind of going to be cheating a little bit here put that over your concoction of oh my scales in the light there we go yeah i know you're like i can't see anything that's because there's a box in the way so there you go, you put the cardboard box over your mold with the paper towels, and you basically made yourself a condensation chamber that will speed up the curing process. So instead of waiting about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm gonna come back and check it in about five, and it should be, in maybe five to 10 minutes, it should be ready for the next layer. All right, time to take off the box and check it out. So what we're gonna do, what I like to do to check the, it's hard for me to even tell what I'm doing with the box in the way, right? Um, so what we're gonna, what I like to do is find a spot that is far away from the important part. So I'm gonna touch this corner over here to test the tackiness. You can see it is getting there. Not quite the level of tackiness that we want. That's okay. Well, I'm going to let it sit here a little bit longer. And while it's doing that, this one doesn't need to speed up. So I'm going to just move this very gently. Once you pour a mold, you want to try to not move it very much because moving it around can introduce bubbles. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a leak there in the corner. But not enough that is going to impact it because it's going to be gelled up soon enough. I'm just going to move that over there to the corner. <clears throat> And while we are waiting a little bit longer on this, actually, I think what I might do is, let's see, I'm going to get my brush back here. And I'm going to test this real quick just to see, especially over here where it's really thick. And I'm worried about this over here. I'm not too worried about pulling this over top of this since it has a nice beauty coat on there already. And since I'm obviously not gonna be pressure casting this or anything else, I'm not too concerned about there being bubbles in here at all. There's lots of things to consider when you're molding and casting. Are you gonna be pressure casting something? If you're gonna be pressure casting something, you really, really need to make sure you have no bubbles in your silicone because what happens 
uh, I had this little mold. I wish I had a had a picture of it somewhere. I might. I'm going to go look and see if I have a picture. If I do, it's going to show up right here. Beep. Uh, if I do have a picture of that, I'll show you. I had a mold that it was a it was just a junk test mold, and uh, I was testing some new silicone. And uh, it was full of bubbles, and uh, I pressure cast the little part, and it basically came out looking like, I don't know, it was like a punk rock casting because it had these little spikes all over it where the resin had gotten basically, not sucked, but pushed into all the little air bubbles. Um, you couldn't actually see the air bubbles when you looked at the mold because it just looked like a fine, solid surface. But the pressure pushed the silicone and it basically pierced all those little bubbles and went into the silicone. So not only did it completely destroy the mold, think like Magneto pulling the adamantium out of Wolverine destroyed the mold, but then also the the cast had all these little spikes all over it, which is actually kind of cool looking. Um, but it was a good test. The test was actually successful <laughs> for what I was testing. And there will be videos of that coming soon. It's a new silicone from BJB Enterprises, actually, that um, we're doing some testing for them. And it's really cool. I'm pretty excited to show you guys those videos when we're done with them. No, I don't want that bubble right there. Boop. Here we go. Boop. Boop. This table is supposed to be level, but it's not looking very level to me. It's looking like that end is is a little a little lower. I think maybe I will do something about that in the near future. Not right now, because you don't want to watch me level the table, right? No. Okay. So we're gonna let that sit for a little bit longer. And while that's sitting for a little bit longer, I'm gonna show you the stuff that I was talking about earlier. So this is SC5001 or 5001, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is the silicone thickening agent for BJB, from BJB Enterprises. Um, for what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix about um, somewhere between five and, or oof, no, between like, two and five percent is what you want to get depending on what you're going for uh by weight and i actually while we were waiting because again i can't really show you i already put the part a that we're going to use in here um and so we're going to put that in there and then the part b and brush it on top of this the other thing i'm going to show you while we're waiting <clears throat> is what's going on top of the silicone so we're going to use this, which is BR75D, which is a brushable, rigid um, resin, basically. And so we're going to use that. We'll brush that on over top of this once the silicone is cured. So like later tonight, uh, brush it on there to make the rigid shell. And, um, and then we'll have a nice shell that holds the silicone perfectly straight. And we can pour it from pour pour the uh, resin from the other side. Um, what well, the next step after the resin the sorry the next step after all the silicone is cured is I'm actually going to leave it in here, and just because it's easier than than trying to do it ahead of time, I'm going to cut keys through the silicone through the clay while it's in the box, and then brush on the BR75D. And what that does is it'll give keys where the silicone and the um, the rigid shell locked together. Uh, we'll also put some keys on top of the second layer of silicone. All right, we are ready to do the second side. Uh, real quick, I was gonna show you. So <clears throat> I mentioned the registration keys that are gonna go on top. Because this is such a small skinny mold, I just made a few long skinny ones. 99% of the time we make registration keys for things out of old molds, <laughs> um, because why not? Um, so even a dead mold can have a second life, uh, especially like if a mold 
gets burned out so that the part that you're actually casting with is all crusty and, and wrecked. The rest of the mold that has really never had any resin is usually pretty good, especially if you cut into it. So that's, we do a lot of that, of, of cutting into old molds that are trash and rescuing as many bits and parts as you can. You can also use the pieces as filler sometimes and a bunch of other fun stuff. <clears throat> All right, so I've already put the part A in here and I put the thickener in there. Um, so now I just need to put this in here. The other thing I like about using the funnel is I can quickly move the funnel back to the bottle when I get close to what I need. Uh oh, I got a drip on that. See, this is why the plastic crap is there. I love that I have a big splash of silicone part B all over the digital display. So it's getting pretty close. I'm going to stop and just let this drip in, which will probably be perfect 20. Boom. See, and then I just pop that. Oh, you can't see because it's too tall. If I go like this, you can see. There you go, see? Well, now I went too close. You don't want to get that close. All right, so this will go to the side. <clears throat> Just let that drip for a while back into there so we recapture anything. So one of the reasons I'm doing this this way, um, like I mentioned, is the... Number one reason is ha because this is a really long and skinny piece, having the rigid shell will make sure that it doesn't warp or anything while we're casting it. The other thing, um, if you can, if you're doing something where you can use a shell, so we're basically using for this about 500 grams of silicone. If I was pouring this as a block mold, even if I kind of like blocked in the corners and stuff some, when I calculated it, it's about three times that much silicone. And as we all know, silicone is expensive. The, <clears throat> even with the brush on the BR75D, that will only take, that only takes, you know, probably about a, a quarter, I'll do like a quarter inch shell because this is a pretty small and lightweight piece. And even that will be less material than the silicone would be, and that stuff is cheaper than silicone. So not only are we saving a ton of materials, it's also saving a ton of money. And of course, the less materials you use, the lighter your stuff is, which makes it easier for the casting process. Uh, and because I don't know that we're gonna be making a ton of these, I also don't wanna spend a ton of money on the mold if we're only going to make, you know, a handful of these. I don't know. Maybe people will really want these. That would be cool. We're going to cast them in resin and uh, with fiberglass rods down these to give them a little bit of extra support and rigidity so they won't snap or anything since they are long and skinny. So you can see, maybe, let me... Do a quick scrape here. But you can see it's already quite a bit thicker than it was when we did the first batch. Um, I did about they, for 5024, they recommend, like I said, between 2 and 5%, depending on how thick you're making it and your application. I was right about in the middle, so I could probably put a little bit more in here, actually, to make it a little bit thicker, so I can brush it on more. And I'm going to do that. Because I just want it a tiny bit thicker, I'm only going to add a little bit. Obviously, it also thickens up as it cures in the pot, but I know I can do about that much. That's good.
always a balance between speed and quality, right? <laughs> um, got other stuff to do. But the nice thing about this is once I get this silicone on, then normally the cure time for the silicone is about four to six hours. I'll put the box back on it, which will cut it down significantly for the full cure time too, which is also nice. Um, I've used some of the paper towels, so I'll have to put more of those down, but uh, then I can let it sit and then I'll come back to it at the end of the day when I'm done with all the other stuff I need to do. And do that part. Oh yeah, see? Much thicker, which is nice. All right, time to get that on there. So I know I said brush on, and I know I've made a lot of references to caking, to, to icing cakes. Um, I actually like to use the spatula. I don't know if it's gonna work with this since it's a long one, but like, especially on like taller, more vertical brush on molds, I like to use it to brush on those to kind of like paste it over top. We'll see how this goes. I'm gonna do just a nice thick layer all down here. And some of it'll fall off just like before. That's okay, it won't fall off as much. And then we'll do the same thing where we go back and kind of scoop it up. But so first I'm gonna just do one coat all the way down, which should use about half of what I mixed up if I guesstimated correctly. Brushing on molds versus pouring on molds is, in my opinion anyway, a, a much more uh, guesstimation, approximation, getting lucky kind of process. Um, one of the things I do love about 3D modeling and printing masters is that if you're using Fusion 360, what some people don't know is that you can go to the properties of a model. If you just right click on a body in Fusion 360 and hit properties, it'll tell you the volume of the model, which then you can use um, a mold calculator. You measure your mold box, if it's a regular size or a cylinder or a pyramid. You can measure it, put it in the calculator, put the, mold vo the master volume into the calculator, and get exactly the amount of silicone that you need for a pour on mold. For a brush on mold, it's not quite the same because obviously it's not as exact. You're not doing the same level of uh, exactness. What I'm gonna do, because that side of the table seems to be a little bit lower, I'm gonna s turn this around for the second coat. Uh, one thing I forgot that I usually do when I'm doing brush on is I usually add some tint to the layers uh, as you go so that you can make sure that you covered everything in this case i'm not too worried about that so i'm not going to do that step what i am going to do is so it it's hard not to think about desserts when you're doing this because what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically batter this ice it and then i'm going to take this and i'm going to stick it right here. Boop. I'm going to do that with the rest of these. So this is just to kind of prep it. I don't really need to do this part because it'll stick just fine, but it's fun. So I'm going to do it anyway. Put that on right there. Oh, don't fall. Okay. Whew. I'm only gonna do the ones on the lower part right now since it has plenty of silicone. I'm not as worried. Uh, I'll do some more up here on the top part. Oh, it fell off. Don't do that. Stay up there. Um, you don't fall off either. Why are you all falling off everywhere? Slipping and sliding. And then I'll take just a little bit of this and kind of butter up the side of it there to help hold it in. And now you can see this is much thicker, so I can kind of 
help push it up on the sides even more than with the brush I was doing before. And that will help hold it all in place pretty nicely. And then we'll let that, oh, I gotta do this one. And then we'll let that sit for a second and gel up a little bit and then I'll put more on. There we go. All right, so that set for a little, for a couple minutes. So now I'm gonna put some more on and put the keys on the top here. First, I'm going to put a little bit more silicone on top of this high piece. It's gelling up real nice, which is good because that means we're almost done. But also, I'm not done yet, so speed up a little bit. Make sure I get it all in there before it's too late. Just doing my little cake frosting over here. Maybe I should be a baker instead. Cake. Okay. The cake is alive. So ironically, even though I'm trying to save material, this is actually, I have, it's turning out that I probably even used more than I needed, so I could have saved even more, but that's okay, because I still saved a ton, and it never hurts for your mold to be a little thicker versus too thin. All right, so now I'm gonna take this guy, batter it up. That's a cake reference, not a baseball one. Put that right there. Just for the record. And batter that one. I'm gonna stick, oh, you know what, actually, the way I've spaced these, I don't really, I'm gonna just put it right here. I don't really need it, but since I already battered it up, uh, this one is not, that one wants to slide off. Oh, this one slid off too, I don't know why they're sliding off. It's so weird. Probably something to do with how not level this table is. <laughs> Even though it should be. Yep. Coefficient of friction. Liquid sliding against liquid until it becomes a solid. <laughs> Get that on there. All right. Here. And that high point. Some over here. Scrape and boop. So just like before, once I get all this in here, I'm gonna wait about five minutes and then come back and brush it up a little bit. This time I'm not gonna put it in the hot box because I don't want it to cure too fast at this point since it's already pretty thick from the thickener on this layer. So I want to make sure I come back before it's too gelled up because I don't want to mess up this layer of silicone by futzing with it while it's curing. And then see, I'm trying to just put it just down the center over top of the piece, the highest points. To make sure those all get good. And coverage. All right, here's the last scrape for the tip. 
Just the tip right there. <coughs> all right, that's all the silicone. So we'll give it five minutes and then check it. All right, we've given it a few minutes here and I'm gonna go back in now with the actual brush again. You can see it's getting pretty thick. So after this, we're gonna leave it alone, but I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with the first coat, which is kind of go from the sides and just kind of stack it up on top of the piece. Um, now that it's as thick as it is, more of it will stick on top, but some of it will run back down obviously, which is fine. Nice and thick. Yeah, we're definitely getting to the point where we don't want to mess with it anymore because we don't want to mess up what's already there by pulling it. It's one of the, you got to be careful on how much you mess with it once it starts kicking, once it starts curing, because if you pull on and tug on it too much, it's going to pull away from your master and then you're going to have bubbles and things on the good part of your mold, which you don't want, obviously. You can see how much, even when I'm brushing over here on the sides, that it's starting to pull. So I'm trying to stay as far from the master as I can, pull from the edges to the center, and then I'll just let it be. After that... If you find you have any big bubbles, you can just hit them with the brush and pop them. And get over there on the tip again. I realized that uh, the back side of this is completely flat, so it doesn't need to be a two-part mold either, which makes this even easier because it's going to be just the one side of the silicone with the shell to hold it, and then we'll just pour it in the back side, and that's it. Also, because they're tongs, just like scissors, it's two pieces that are the same bolted together in the middle facing each other, and then you have your tongs that are functional. These will be functional as far as being able to open and close them. I wouldn't try to, you know, do any blacksmithing with them. Yeah, you can see it's not even really moving anymore, so that's a good indication that we're just about done doing this step. You might see like on a, some of the, on a lot of other brush on molds, even like on our helmet mold, the registration keys are a lot bigger and these ones I did pretty small. And that's just because, because this is going to be a flat one-sided mold, really the keys are just to help line everything up in the shell. So they don't need to actually hold the mold in place like you would on a vertical surface. So these little, these little shallow ones will be fine for just making sure it all locks into place. I didn't need to do any big, giant, chunky keys. A little tiny bit more on the bottom, because it's looking a little thin. Here we go. All right, so we'll come back later and do the show. All right, so here we are a few hours later. And one thing I like to do, I'll do, I'll show you on this. I, I accidentally did this. I was a little too excited before I hit record. What I like to do before I un, un mold box something, is 
I take an X-Acto and I just go around the edge and trim off that little tiny bit of flashing. Um, what that does is it makes it, especially on a one part mold, so that once you take it out and put it down, your surface is flat because that meniscus of the silicone up on the edges will make your mold not sit flat unless you get rid of it. You can trim it off afterwards, but I find that it's way easier to just trim all the way around and take off that edge while it's still in your mold box. So let's see if this one is successful. Here we go, ready? Uh-oh, that's okay, that happens sometimes. If you a little bit of leakage underneath, usually this stuff all comes off pretty easily. Like I said, this is a structural piece, so if there's a little tiny bit of edging on the bottom, I'm not gonna be too concerned. And that stuff is all real easy to trim off, so here we go, ready? No sound better than this. go and we have our mold all nice and ready to go unfortunately we don't get to demold the other one but what i am going to do is the same thing i just talked about um this one's a little messy because of all that brushing and everything but i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to cut all the way around which you know it's kind of boring to watch but i'm going to cut all the way around and then i'm going to cut some keys into it and then um do the brush on mold the brush on uh, shell. One thing you'll notice is this registration key fell in while it was curing instead of the one over here. On the bright side, these three are fine and the top edge of this is enough of a protrusion that it'll make a nice key for the shell anyway. But you can see, um, like I said, I did a little bit more silicone than I had expected, than I had wanted to, but you can see to, to get a nice block mold, I would have had to have done probably about 30 to 40% more silicone just for this side than I have used so far. So not bad. All right, so here goes the cutting.
so to cut the keys for the outer shell, I think I'm going to actually open this up because it'll be much easier to do it if I don't have these walls in my way. And then I'm just going to glue the walls back up to do the shell. There we go. Like that. Spin it around to the other side. Foam core is one of our favorite things for making mold boxes because it's cheap. It's easy to cut and build into different shapes. Uh, we've even used it. You can you can fold it up. You can kind of curve it if you gently crease it along a length. So you can even make curved walls, which we've done with it before a bunch of times. Um, it's a really versatile way to make all sorts of different sizes and shapes of things that you can mold things into. All right, that's probably good. Now, for where I want it to connect on the sides, I'm going to do one over here where I know I'm not going to hit anything important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple of little keys, kind of like this, into the silicone. And even so you can see what I'm doing is I'm making little little notches, right? So I'm gonna cut a few of these around. And then when we put the shell material on it, it'll go into those little crevices that I cut out and uh, help lock everything in place when it's all done, said and done. Just a little bit more of that out of there. Because why not? There's a nice big gap here, so it makes it easy to cut a bigger channel. Now I know this comes and goes down this way, so I'm gonna do a couple over here and then a couple on this side over here at the end. Whoa. Just the same thing, do one here. I might do a couple more along the length just because it's so long, but not as big. Where it gets a little narrower, I can see that's way over there. So I'm gonna go like right here, right here. Nice little key shape. <coughs> now I am leaving the clay under there because even though it's pretty thick, there is a chance that the shell material might run under the mold, but I don't want it to do. <coughs> and I'm going to just go right here. I think I know it's right there because you can see my other key. You know, I almost forgot something. And I'm glad I cut this open because it made, means that I did not forget. I actually am not going to glue it back the way that it was exactly. Because if I did that, then there wouldn't be any side. So I actually want to open this up and I'm going to refold the walls up just about a quarter inch out all the way around. And that way when I do the shell, it'll go along the sides of this as well. I almost forgot that. I am glad that I did not. Do another one right here. A little bit smaller, but there, nonetheless. There we go. And then I'll do one more right here. And you may or may not have been thinking this, but I will say it anyway. These right here are all going to be registration keys in some future project.
Uh, this is getting a little close to the edge, so I'm a little worried about it, but I think I'm going to do one little narrow one right here. It won't be as deep, but it will be deep enough. I highly recommend making sure your knife is sharper than mine is if you're going to do something like this. It's still cutting fine, but it's not cutting as easy as it should. And that is because this thing needs to be sharpened or replaced, probably. The tip's broken off anyway, so I should probably just replace it at this point. So there we go. So next step is widening the box all the way around a little bit, and then we'll actually get to do the shell. And of course, before we do the shell, we're going to mold release all of this so that the shell actually doesn't stick to it. It's usually pretty good at not sticking to each other, but, you know, always better to be safe than sorry. Um, I'm going to blow this off with air, though, first. So that's over there, and it's loud, so I'm not going to record that part. We'll do that and be back. All right, so we have the box all ready to go. I've already started mixing the, once again, just as a refresher, the R75D brushable. That is the part B, which comes in... One of these metal pail cans you gotta mix it up real good before you put it in here um it's just one to one by weight so i'm going to oh before i do that forget. so this stuff comes out like a kind of off-white color but it's tintable because it is a urethane and all of the bjb pigments work with pretty much any of their their urethanes um this is just blue that we use for a lot of stuff so i'm just gonna put a couple drops just because I don't like it being ivory that is more than enough give us a nice blue color okay so let's try this do 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 a little bit in case I spin and go <laughs> um, one of the cool things about doing this in a long flat mold is that even though this is brushable, since we don't have a lot of vertical surface, um, it's going to be real easy to, once we mix it, we can actually just kind of pour it in the box and then kind of brush it around to smooth it out. Oh yeah, perfect. I love it when a pour comes out right. That wasn't a very good Hannibal with paraphrase. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll turn that off. This stuff has, uh, I'll have to double check. I can't remember now off the top of my head if it's a 10 or a 30 minute work time. Obviously that's a huge difference. <clears throat> Uh, but we won't even take 10 minutes. This, this is, like I said, especially on something like this, it'll be pretty quick. The other, the other reason I like to put the pigment in, um, even if it's just a tiny bit, is it helps you tell better because one of the parts is clear, slightly off white. And the other part is that kind of gross tan color. It's really hard to tell just mixing them without pigment if you've actually mixed it up really well. If you put a little bit of pigment in, <clears throat> then it's really easy to see if it's all mixed or not, because if it's not, you'll see the streaks of either pigment or you'll see streaks of the gross off-white color. But that is a nice, and thorough, even blue. So, like I said, what I'm going to do now is, real quickly, I'm just going to go bloop, 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 all down here. Just kind of pour it in. Bloop, bloop. And I'm 
not too worried. I think I calculated enough. I'm also not too worried because it's really easy to just mix up some more and put more right on top. And what's already there? You'll notice I am not using the metal spatula that I used for silicone because that would be a huge disaster. So what I'm going to do, mostly the most important thing for the first pass in case there isn't enough is that I get all around the side and in all of those registration keys that I made. And then, as long as I have that, um, I can build up on top of that. If it doesn't get all in there, then it never will. It doesn't get in there on the first pass. So. And yes, I'm using a stick as a brush. It's really good at just kind of spatulating this all on, making sure it gets down all on the sides like I wanted. And because I know this end of the mold is a little bit thinner because it's the thin end of the tongs, I want more shell down there to hold that because the silicone is a lot fluffier than at the top end where it's a lot thicker for the head of the tongs. Mm -hmm. All right, oh yeah, that is nice. I'm very, very happy with this. Probably could have used a little bit more. It's at that phase where it's like, there is maybe enough that it will work fine as is. So like more in the original mix would have been good, but is it worth mixing more? Maybe. The other nice thing is I can, in theory, once this is dry, take it out and check it. Um, because at this point, once this is all hardened, I can always add on other layers even without the mold box. I can just brush it up on the top to reinforce it at a later time. If this ends up not being enough. But I think it might be. It really just needs to be strong enough to hold the silicone in place with resin in it. And we're casting it. And because it's just an open, it's going to be an open mold, it's really just going to get poured in and sit on the table. So I think this, even at this thin of a layer, this will probably be good enough. That's the other nice thing about this stuff. It's so rigid that it's really good at holding stuff in place without even necessarily having to use a lot of it. <coughs> If you're wondering why, for this part of the video, I sound much different, it's because I'm wearing my respirator. The silicone is um, pretty much no VOC, so wearing a respirator while doing the silicone, not really a big deal. This stuff, however, is not very kind or forgiving to your body. So... Definitely want to wear a respirator when messing with this stuff. Unless you don't like breathing. I actually don't know if it causes lung damage, but probably. It causes all kinds of probably potential with bad things if you breathe it in a lot. It has one of those California health label warnings on it, so you know it's bad.
just like with brushing on a thick and silicone, you get to kind of play when you get to that point of like, am I helping or just making it worse? I should probably stop touching it and walk away. And I think that is exactly the stage on that. Yeah, looks pretty good though. We'll let that cure and then crack it open and we'll go from there. All right, here we are. As you can see, the stuff gets nice and rigid. So, the real question here is if I need to do any more or if this will be enough. Really, unfortunately, there's only one way to find out. That is to open it up. Find out. Obviously, like any other rigid substance, the thinner it is, the less rigid it is. But again, like I said, for this specific piece, especially since it's not holding two pieces of a mold or anything, it doesn't need to be quite as rigid as, say, like when we use it for our sofa bracers. So what I'm going to do is just kind of slip that open, flip it over. One thing you want to be careful of, especially if you do it in something where it has flat sides, is these edges can be a little sharp. Um, I'll go through and, and dremel down the edges to just smooth them out. Make sure there's no sharp points. But I'm not going to demold it yet. I'm just going to get the backer board away from it. It should pull everything with it. It's okay if the clay comes in. Try and... <clears throat> well, I was hoping I could keep the foam board mostly intact, but it's not having any of that, so that's okay. Like I said, worst case scenario, if I do need to add any more rigidity to this, I can do that even without the box. I can just lay it flat and brush it on the back side. But it's looking pretty dang good as far as being rigid enough as is. So my test for whether it's rigid enough is to do this. See, I'm just holding it at the very edge and it's staying completely in place. So I'm going to call that a success and rigid enough and thick enough as is for this. So the next step will be cleaning out all this clay, cleaning up the edges so that it's not all sharp, pulling this all out, and then doing a test cast. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Taking it out. Of the mold. Just trying to. Not sure if the get the whole mold out with the master or just get enough out. Usually, it's easier if you get the master out first. Preferably without breaking it in case you need to redo anything. So there's that out. And then this comes out really easily. Boop. So you can see the shell has all the nice registration marks to hold everything in place. Look at that. A little floppy thin thing. So hopefully casting it works.